What's up everybody? Welcome to today's video. So today we're getting jiggy wooded, okay? We're gonna be taking a look at a 2500 series Dodge Ram Laramie truck versus the 200. <laughs> okay, you gotta laugh a little bit, right? My voice just went, ooh. Anyways, we're gonna be looking at the F250 Lariat, okay? So that's what we got. I got the keys of this beautiful gray F250 Lariat, and then we're gonna drive it over there by the Dodge Ram. Now I'm gonna let you know right up front, the Dodge over there, or the Ram, however you wanna call it, is a 2016. I don't have access to a 2018 or a 2019 Ram truck right now, so I'm doing the best I can. So if you wanna quit watching the video, go ahead and click off, but it's gonna be exciting, okay? Because we'll go take a look and see, really, realistically here, is that Ram really gonna be better than this Ford right here? I wanna know. So let's go ahead and get started. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and crank up this beautiful truck. Man, I'm a fan of Ford trucks, I really am. And you know, I ain't gonna lie to you, I've seen quite a few Ram trucks that are really nice as well. Dodge makes a good looking truck. But let's go ahead and crank it up, it's hot outside. We'll hit this two times. There it goes. Now, I don't know if the Ram over there is a diesel or not, but I'm not really gonna be talking about that so much today. I mean, we'll get into it a little bit, but the main thing is I wanna look at these trucks and see what the creature comfort features are and, and is the Ram truck really gonna be that much more comfortable to sit in and drive and you know what tech features and all that. And even though it's a 2016 Ram, it still should have most of the modern technology that most trucks have, even in 2016. 18 so you know hey what's it hurt all right well hang tight with me we're gonna go over there and I'll be right back all right everybody we got our Ford parked right here looking good LED lights on we got the blinkers on we got it all going on boy that's super duty Super duty as they say. Here's the key to the Ram truck. It's right over here, four wheel drive. I hope it's diesel. I don't know, it might be, it might not be. It's a surprise for you. <laughs> so, it's a surprise. Let's go ahead and uh, crank her up. That's how the first thing you can tell if it's diesel, you'll hear it. Hit this twice. Well, are you gonna crank up for me? Hit that. One, two. Well, I've been knocking on it. That's a diesel. That's a Cummins diesel. I heard it. I heard it. I didn't know. I heard it though. Yeah. Turbo diesel. We got it. I'm excited. Take a look at that. Isn't that pretty? That really is pretty. It's pretty. Do you think it's pretty? I think it's pretty. Oh, now there's one more. There's one more truck that's going to be going into review today. Guess what it is? It's a Chevy. Silverado diesel, bum 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 diesel. <laughs> LTZ. So basically, every truck in the video today is pretty well equipped and it's gonna have leather interior. And I'll be doggone it if my phone isn't ringing. Always ringing, right? Where are you at? What you doing? When you coming home? And that's what the old wife tells me, right? Oh man. That's gonna be a tough one, folks, for a guy that likes four trucks. Now this is already feeling comfortable in here. Man, this is nice. Boy, it's like the creme de la creme. Alpine stereo system, oh yeah. Stay with me, we about to get started. I'm gonna go get the Chevy, I'll be right back. All right, now we in between two big old diesel trucks. The Ford, the Dodge, or the way they call it, Ram. Oh, they looking good, they looking good. Y'all ready for the next one? Let's go get the Chevy over here. The heavy Chevy. Chevy runs deep, as they say, right? Now here's the thing. You got Ford Tough, right? Ford Tough. Chevy runs deep. What is Dodge's or Ram? What is Ram? We got horns, we're Ram. I don't know what Ram's lingo is. And that's unfortunate, really, because that tells me that Ram is not doing a good job with their advertising. But maybe that's because I never film Rams, so I don't really uh, hear the lingo so much. That's probably what it is. Because Ram does do a lot of advertising. All right, let's go ahead and get this one. So we got three different diesel motors. We got the Power Stroke Ford. We got the Cummins on the Ram. Now we got the Allison transmission with the Duramax on the Chevy. Let's go ahead and crank her up. Lock. Let's hear how it sounds. 
Now on remote starts, the Ford and the Ram, you hit the button twice. On a Chevy or a GMC, you hold it down for two to five seconds, cranks it up. All right, man. Now the only difference with this truck versus the others is it's a dually, okay? But really today, I'm just looking at all the stuff on the interiors and the looks of these things, okay? That's what we want to see. And at the end of the video, then we'll see which one you like best. So let's go ahead and get in. I'll be right back. hot today in the Carolinas and it might be raining just a little bit but let me tell you one thing I'm here to help you look at trucks that's what we're exactly doing today so we got three gorgeous American-made trucks pulled up and that's what we got it's all American-made here we don't have any Toyotas in the mix but let me tell you we're gonna have a good time that's what we're doing I made a decision last week on my channel to start having more fun on Charleston car videos no matter what I am videoing. So that's my goal is make y'all laugh, have a little fun, but at the same time, share the message that I'm sharing about these great vehicles, great dealerships, and great people. So here we go. All right, everybody, so to start things out, we're gonna start showing you the trucks. This one right here is your 2018 Ford F-250 Lariat with the 6.7 liter Power Stroke Diesel. Absolutely gorgeous truck. Got everything you could want, from LED headlights, to leather interior, to panoramic glass sunroofs, to sync, to every technology you could ever want on a truck. That truck's got it right there. The next one up, the 2016 Ram 2500 Series Heavy Duty Turbo Diesel with the Laramie package. It also is well equipped as well. It has LED blinkers, daytime running lights, fogs, beautiful alloys, full four door, luscious interior, and all the technology and tech features and safety things that you could ever ask for on a truck. I promise you today, every truck we look at is gonna have some really nice stuff on it, I promise. The next one here is the 2016 Chevy Silverado 3500 HD LTZ. As you can see right here, also a absolutely beautiful truck. A little different than the other two being it is a dually and a 3500 series, but the reason I pulled it up in the mix is because it is an LTZ, it's preloaded up, and for the most part, the Chevrolet Silverado right here is gonna have the same creature comfort features on the cabin as these right here, as in the same kind of similarity as a 2500 Silverado. Maybe it's bigger, I get it. So don't have to tell me that in the comment section, but I do think they are similar on the insides to a 2500 series Silverado LTZ. So with no further ado, let's keep rolling around. Let's take a look on the outsides of these trucks. All of them are great looking, aren't they? They sure are, they really are. We probably have over $200,000 worth of truck right here, okay? All three of these trucks probably retails out to be over $200,000 if you want to buy them brand new. I mean, it's a big money game here with trucks, folks, but let me tell you, Americans need trucks to get the job done, whether you're out there on the work site, whether you're traveling across country, if you need something big to do a heavy tow, tow hole, haul, you need it right here with a truck. So that's the whole point here, folks. Now, the Lariat F-150, 6.7 liter power stroke diesel can get the job done on about any given day of the week. Now, today, we're not going to be talking so much about towing power and what all that can do, because I know a lot of y'all watching probably already know know all about that stuff. We're going to be kind of showing you these trucks and what's nice on them and what one has that maybe the other doesn't have, right? So one thing we'll look to start out here is the running boards. All of them have running boards on the bottom. That is a great feature to have. It's a definitely a must to have on your truck, especially if you go out on a Friday night and your lady gets out. She doesn't have to step right onto the ground. And hey, you don't want to get your Timberlands dirty, do you guys? No. So those are nice to have. Right here, diesel fuel goes in, add blue goes in there. So that's what you got. Every truck in the video today is a diesel. This one also has the FX4 off-road package, LED taillights, 
backup sensors, backup camera, also has a LED light right here so it can shine at nighttime so you can see exactly what's going on when you put the vehicle in reverse. Very nice. Another great feature this truck provides is a power tailgate feature, which doesn't seem to want to work right now because I don't have the key in my hand. So we'll go back and get that in a little bit here. While we're looking, let's go ahead and take a look at the rear of the Dodge Laramie. It also has backup sensors, also has backup camera, and also has tow package right there for you. Very similar to the rear of this. One thing it doesn't have is it does not have a rear LED light to shine out here at nighttime. That's one feature on the Ford truck I absolutely love. It's great. Does this one open up when the key is in the truck and it's cranked? Of course it does. It does drop down hard like that. I will tell you right now, that truck over there is a power tailgate and it should drop down nice and smooth there for you. That truck also, the Ford, does have a back window that opens and closes. The Dodge Laramie also has one that opens and closes. That's got a spray-in bed liner. This has got a plastic bed liner. That really is just up to the dealership who purchased the truck when it was new if they wanted to do spray-in or plastic. So, you know, that's how it goes. Let's look over here at the Chevrolet. Again, it is a dually. It's big, it's wide, it's got some hips on it. Does it have a backup camera? Of course it does, but it does not provide a rear LED light. So, your Ford truck will definitely outcompete these trucks when it comes to backing up with the camera systems and all that stuff. Promise you that today, I really do. Does it go down smooth? Of course it does. That's nice. I really do like the tailgates that drop down smooth. This has a spray in bed liner, does have a back window that opens and closes. All right, you got Line X in here, and I think you got Rhino liner down there, and this is just a traditional rugged liner. Another notable mention today on the video, all three trucks did come equipped with remote start. Another great feature to have on your truck. So again, make sure if you're out there shopping for a truck, buy one with remote start. You know, it really makes a difference on a hot day like today or even a cold day in the winter to crank your truck up in the morning and get it cooled or warmed up before you hit the road. As you already know, each truck has a diesel engine. So, with no further ado, let's pop the hoods on the trucks and listen and look at the diesel motors under these hoods. Starting out is the Chevy Silverado Duramax diesel. It's a 6.6 .6 liter turbo diesel with this much horsepower and with this much torque. All right, there's the torque and horsepower specs on the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel with Allison transmission. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Dodge Ram. Your Dodge Ram comes with a 6.7 liter diesel turbo. Oh boy, 6.6 .6 on the Chevy, 6.7 on the Ram. Does have the, well I just had a brain fart. What kind of turbo engine? Cummins, I think that's what it is. Cummins, Cummins or Cummings? Cummins, Cummins. <laughs> I know I've had some of y'all before my Ram truck say, it's not Cummings, it's Cummins. So anyways, got it right this time for some of y'all out there that keep watching. Thank you. So that's what you got. What is the horsepower specs on this engine? What are the torque specs? All right, there you go. Here's your Ford F-250. Power stroke diesel, 6.7 liter. The Ram was a 6.7 as well. What are the horsepower ratings on this engine? What are the torque ratings? There you go. Now here's one thing that I found extremely interesting under the hoods of two of the trucks out here. The Ford F-250 with the diesel has a light under the hood, which is LED. Also, the Dodge Ram has a light under the hood. The Chevrolet Silverado does not have a light under the hood. Now, you may be thinking, well, what's so interesting about that, right? Well, I remember as a kid seeing lights under the hoods of vehicles back in the day when I was younger. And then now that I'm reviewing cars as an adult, you don't see lights under the hoods as much. And so you think about it and you're like, well, the reason on why there's no lights under the hoods of cars anymore is because 
people just take their cars to the shop or they're more reliable and people just don't seem to work on their vehicles anymore like they used to. But I guess Ford and Ram still give people the opportunity at nighttime to be able to see under the hoods of their trucks just in case they need to actually do something under there. So that's important. There's your light on your Ford. And if you didn't believe me, here's the light on the Ram. Now the Ram's just got a regular halogen type bulb. This has got LED, so a little bit nicer in the Ford. And that's really, really, really at the end of the day, when I review Fords and Chevys and Dodges and trucks, I've always noticed that the Ford trucks, maybe they cost more than the other ones, but there's a reason, because it's even the little things like that have an LED versus the regular old light under the hood. LED lights just last a lot longer. Ford seems to really pay attention to the fine details and making just the itty bitty littlest of things like a light under a hood a little bit better than competition. And that's important. And one more quick thing that I thought was nice is that each truck doesn't have a pole to hold up the hoods, okay? They got the, uh, the Dodge here's got shock, or the, the Ford's got shocks, the Dodge has got shocks. So it's easy to close down, easy to push up. And the Chevy, instead of shocks, which is actually, this is actually a little nicer, it's got this thing on jiggy here which should last longer than the shocks under the hoods of those other trucks. And uh, so anyways, that's pretty nice. All beautiful trucks. All right, that's the exteriors of them. But before we get done with the outside, we're gonna look at one thing on the back of each truck and then we'll get on the insides and see what's going on. So another thing that I always like to talk about on trucks is how easy it is to get in the back of the tailgate on a truck. Because listen, whether you're 30 years old like me, 20 years old, or even 50, 60, or 70 years old, getting into the back of the truck is not always the easiest of tasks, you know? You just never know what's going on. You might be in a position where you, your legs hurt, or, uh, or you got a bad back, or, or something, and, uh, and you know, getting in the back of a truck to haul things, or get things in and out, is just not always easy. You know, I had a man that came over to my house a couple days ago, that hauled off a washer and dryer. And uh, you know, he's in his 50s. You know, of course I jumped in the back of the truck like a little monkey, you know, but he just couldn't do that. So what Ford has done that seems to be better than all other trucks in the United States of America right now is first off, they're giving us this power tailgate. I mean, my Lord, if that's not luxury, I don't know what is, that's sweet. But really what tops it off even more is this. Press that down, do that, Drop that, pull that, up that. It's locked, it's in place. It's easy to grab a hold of and just step up. I mean, look how fast I just got into the tailgate or the, the trunk of this truck, okay? That was quick. The Dodge Ram, not gonna have anything like that. The Chevy's not gonna have anything like that, but we'll go see what they actually do have. But Ford obviously has got a patent on that technology and they've done a great job with that. I'd love to meet the man and shake the man's hand that actually created that technology on the Ford truck. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just so, so nice. And it's stable and it's strong and, and it just makes life a lot easier getting in the back of the truck. So I'm really liking that. The Ram over here, it has nothing. I mean, there is nothing back here to help me get in the back of the truck. Do you believe me? I'm serious, folks. There's no step. There's no pole. There's not even a place to put your foot at to get in the back. Nowhere. The only place you got on the Ram truck to put your foot is right there. So I'm not even going to attempt right now to get back here because it's going to, I'm going to have to sit on that then pull myself up. That's not good. Okay, so always pay attention to that on the Ram, doesn't have that. Now at least Chevrolet has integrated their step into the back bumper here, okay? Which is a little bit, at least it's better than the, than the Ram, because the Ram has nothing. So at least you got that. Put your foot there. But then it's still kind of awkward, because you don't really have anywhere to grab. You definitely want to use your left foot over here, and grab here, and then pull up. I mean, and now we're back here. So definitely a little bit easier, but that blows me away that the Ram Laramie 2500 has nothing to help you get into the back of their truck. And that's one 
of many reasons why I'm not a fan of Ram trucks. They do look good on the outside, they're pretty trucks, but it's things like that that really matter at the end of the day when you're taking that truck home with you, okay? Believe me, it really is. Now, if you're gonna use your truck just to be having a truck because you wanna ride around town and be cool in your truck, maybe you're not gonna use that, but it's important, it's important. But Ford's got it on lockdown, they really do. They make it easy to get in and out. All right, that's it for that. All right, everybody, I had to take a break for a minute. I had to cool off, get a little cold water. Anyways, let's hop in this Ford truck and check it out, man. This thing is sweet. Before we do, you definitely got power windows, power door locks, power mirrors. You got mirrors that powerly move out. I mean, you got all that cool stuff. Memory seats, you got power seats, lumbar, then you got leather, ooh-wee, perforated. It's also heated and cooled, and a good-looking leather, by the, by the way. Very nice. Anyways, let's hop in the cockpit. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna spend eight to 10 minutes on each truck interior. We're just gonna browse through them real quick and see what we got going on. But anyways, let's go ahead and crank it up and uh, see what it provides. Start-stop engine button, which is nice. Leather wrapped steering wheel, beautiful display screen, a nice looking screen right there which is big, heated cool seats, two USB ports, brake gain, auxiliary. My favorite feature on the Ford is this 360 camera view which looks phenomenal. I also like how you can actually hit the camera button and be able to see the different camera views by doing that. So that's pretty cool, right? Oh yeah, check it out. Look at that, you can switch them around. There's that top-down view at the tailgate. None of the trucks out here today are going to have as much, uh, you know, camera views as the Ford does. Those two trucks over there are going to have one camera view, and that's it. Um, and you got an auxiliary there if you want to add in another camera to put on the back of that fifth wheel or a trailer. So that's all pretty nice. Wow. Another feature I like is a 110 volt, 400 watt max outlet. Big. Glove box, plenty of room here, plenty of room down there, leather, cup holders, more cup holders. I mean, it's just got a lot of nice features. It's got a Sony stereo system, you got sunglass holders up top, you got all your auxiliaries, home link, and then panoramic glass sunroof. Again, the Ford truck is the creme de la creme of American trucks, folks. They really are nice. They got a lot of great features on them. Anyways, I'm not even diving into every single thing it's got. I'm just kind of highlighting a little bit. You know, you got leather wrapped up onto the dash, got the soft touch going on. I mean, wow. Let's take a quick look in the back seats back here. Another thing that's always been nice about a Ford truck is a lot of legroom and headroom. You do have rear air vents back here, which are so important to have. I mean, I can't tell you how many trucks I've seen that don't have rear air vents in the back. That is a must have if you got kids, friends, or co-workers in here with you. You wanna keep everybody cool in this hot summer heat. More power outlets, you got two USBs, you got 110 volt, 400 watt max outlet there. You got your armrest, and then I love that the cup holders are there instead of here. You know, some of these things are, are similar to what I point out, but also under here, you can pop this up and have storage under there. How about that? So, I mean, the Ford, it, again, I, I can't say it enough. It's the fine details that Ford pays attention to that makes their trucks so nice. Let's go look over at Dodge real quick. Now, I know some of y'all gonna give me some hell about saying Dodge instead of Ram. I'm gonna try to say Ram. But to me, it's still a Dodge, right? It's all good though, really. Y'all get what I'm saying. Okay, now here's what we got going on here. And this is a nice truck, folks. I'll tell you one thing. Ram trucks, the interiors are really nice. You got power everything in here from your windows to your mirrors. Um, cup holders down there. Cubby hole spots. Synthetic wood trim. Heated seats. I don't know if you got cooled. We'll look in a minute. Memory seats and power. Um, definitely the leather's wearing a little bit on there. But again, this is a 2016. You got layer meat right there. Still a very nice looking leather seat. Black interior, just like the Ford. Leather wrapped up onto here. Let's go ahead and hop in and get a closer look. Definitely seems like it sits a little higher off the ground than the F-250. Here's the key. 
start stop engine button. Cranks up just nice and easy. Sirius XM radio. The uh, the screen in here looks really good. I've, now that's one thing. I really do like the screens in Ram trucks and in Chrysler products. Um, they got more of a square than a rectangle, which is kind of interesting. And it looks like it does have heated and cooled seats. And the, the colors are nice and vivid on there. Look at that. Wow, that's really nice. Um, you got an LCD screen through the middle here, leather there, a little soft touch going on up here. Alpine stereo system. The Ford has a Sony, and the Chevrolet should have a Bose. Okay, so all three trucks got different stereo systems. A lot of storage in here. Cup holders, cubby hole there. You got a 115 volt, 150 watt outlet here, just like on the Ford. This is pretty big, opens up, and that's a lot of space in there. The only thing I'm not really seeing right now is USB ports. Let's have a closer look. That turbo engine's starting to spool up a little bit. That's a little odd. Must be have something to do with the, um, the, AC, the AC cutting on. But there's no outlets down in this gully here, or I call it the junk drawer. So there's no outlets in there. You got a 12 volt here. But yeah, it is a little odd. No, uh, I don't see any USB ports. Glove box, glove box. Anyways, that's a little odd. LED lights. But no, no sunglass holder, okay? So no sunglass holder and no USB. That's interesting, it really is. I mean, there's gotta be a USB and auxiliary in here somewhere. If there is, I don't see it. Let's go look in the back. See what amenities we got in the back of this truck. You got your handles. There's your leather, looking good. Um, a little different setup. The light is up here instead of up there. So your light's there, your hangers are here, you got some speakers up there. Alpine stereo system is definitely a plus. It looks like it's about to pour down rain out there right now. Dark clouds coming in. Um, 12 volt rear heated seats, cup holders down there. Armrest, cup holders right there. Here comes the rain, holy mackerel. Let's uh, shut this truck off and, and go jump in the Chevy. Start stop engine button's nice, that's fine. That was odd. Let's go look in the Chevy uh, Chevrolet over there. Now again, this is a 3500 series, but 2500 series should be about the same. Um, definitely got a Bose in here like I was telling you on stereo. Power everything, synthetic wood, cubby hole spots, power seat, gray leather instead of black. You can get it with black if you want it. Um, leather's on here. The fit and finish is nice in the Chevy. It definitely runs deep. Um, the only thing a little different is there's no start stop engine button. You are cranking it up the old fashioned way by putting a key in. Some people still like that, okay? The Dodge, the, the Ram still seems like it sits a little higher than both of these trucks. Uh, they all got some leather or some soft touch up on the dash with some stitching. The screen definitely looks a little smaller than what the Ford and the Ram have, but still a nice screen. That's your camera with the guidelines. That's the only view you're getting, okay? The same with the Ram. There's no other cameras on this particular Ram over there. Um, other than that, you know, you got USBs, 12 volt, 12 volt power outlet, cooled and heated seats. I like that you got the new charging, charging set up here for a wireless cell phone. Two more USBs auxiliary, cubby hole, and a light. Okay, the other two trucks did not have a light in the junk dr junk drawer. Um, you do got sunglass holders, LED interior lights, home link, all that. Two glove boxes. It's looking nice inside the Chevrolet. It's a nice truck. It really is. Um, Chevy has more of a clean, simple fit and finish to it. 
Um, Ram is a little more bling bling look to it. And Ford is a clean, simple fit and finish, but then a very, um, but, but very nice when it comes to the amenities in the truck and what it has. Again, you're paying that extra money, and that's really what it comes down to. Now, this Chevy truck, my only complaint is that you don't have rear air, okay? There's no rear air vents back here at all. Plenty of leg room. I'm not a fan of those cup holders on the Chevy. That takes up all my arm space. And again, I'd like to have rear air and a little more technology for power outlets. All you have in the back of the Chevy is a 12 volt. Lights are in the middle. On the Ram over here, I wasn't, I, I'm not sure if I took a close enough look, but. You got air vents right there and a 12 volt. So both trucks, all trucks have some things that are different, some things people like, some things people don't like. I guess really at the end of the day, when you're shopping for a big truck, it really comes down to which one you like, which dealership or brand to get the best interest rate at, which vehicle is gonna be affordable in your payment range, and, uh, and which one do you think is going to last the longest? We know the diesel engines run forever. I had a friend that had a Chevy 2013 diesel. He had to get the transmission redone over it and it was $7,000 on his 2013 Silverado. So I know that at some point, transmissions and things can start giving out. I'm not saying that a Chevrolet truck transmission is gonna give out on every truck. I'm just saying that's what happened in his circumstance. I'm sure there's Rams and Fords that have transmission problems as well, you know? Depends how you take care of them and how you service them and all that. But at the end of the day, like I said, which truck would you pick? Are you a Ford person? Are you a Ram guy? Or are you a Chevrolet guy? Or girl, right? Girls can have trucks too. Anyways, I hope that everything you got to see today was enough. If there's something you would like to see, definitely let me know in the comment section and I will come back out here and do it. Um, we did have a, uh, a guy a few days ago comment on the Ford and Chevy Silverado video, the Versus video. He said, could you please do a, uh, a test drive video on them and check out how they drive. That is something we're planning on doing in August. Today's July 31st. So in August, I'll come back out here and we'll knock out that video driving the trucks. But anyways, thanks for watching everybody. God bless each and every one of you. If you can, please like, comment, and subscribe on the video. We really need your help with the likes so YouTube will see us more and push our content out there. That like button is so important. Please do that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. And <laughs> the last request I have of everybody, if you happen to be in the Carolinas at some point and you wanna buy a truck, come on down and see my friends at Marchant Chevrolet and Ravenel Ford. Thank you again. God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. We got a rainstorm coming. And uh, I already got enough sweat on me. Do I really need more rain on me? No. <laughs> All right, everybody. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed everything I did. We'll see you then. Oh, bonus footage, right? There's one thing I did to, that I didn't do today. One thing I didn't do today. I didn't talk about price. Let's tell you real quick, okay? The Ford truck is a brand new 2018, so it's brand spanking new. It's got a price tag of 74,910. Did y'all hear me? 74,910. Woo, almost $80,000. Now, after the discounts from Ravenel Ford, 4392 is the Ravenel Ford discount. 7518 is after you got 98 over invoice. 1000 rebate. Put you at 69518 and if you finance a Ford, $500 right there. Also, all new trucks at Ravenel Ford have no dealer admin fees, no dog fees, no processing fees, no dealer add-ons, and all vehicles are 98 over invoice, plus you get all the incentives and rebates. Ooh, how about that? Okay, so that's the price on a brand new F-250. Ooh, that's a lot, isn't it? But it's a great deal after all those discounts came through. Here's the 2016 Ram Lamry 2500 series with 43,000 miles. It was 49,880, now dropped down to 48,880. Once again, all used vehicles, 
No DRAM fees, no dock fees, no processing fees at all. Here is the Chevy Silverado 2016 3500 HD LTZ with a, a uh, price of 56880 56880 Again, if you go down to Marchant Chevrolet, our other dealership, all new Chevy trucks from 98 over invoice plus any incentive and rebate money, no dealer added fees, no processing fees, no dealer add-ons or anything like that. Okay, so car buying really is cheaper out here in the country, which is 15 minutes away from Charleston, past the Citadel Mall off Savannah Highway. <laughs> yeah, I've done that about a thousand times. Well, actually more than that, there's 4,500 videos on my channel and I've probably said no deer admin fees, no dog fees, no processing fees. We're just 15 minutes away from Charleston, South Carolina. Come out to Ravenel Ford, March Chevrolet to buy your next truck. I've said that probably 4,000 times since 2011. Woo! I got it. I'm on fire. All right, everybody. Have fun. I'm excited. I'm happy. And uh, I appreciate your time today on the channel. Peace! <laughs>